let me show you how you can easily create five Procreate brushes. But before we get started creating brushes, please be aware that you can get a whole lot of my brushes for free through freefromflow.com or go to my store and get your hands on a bunch of bigger brush packs there. Let's start off with the easiest brush. Number one, a stamp brush. This must be the easiest brush to create. Let me walk you through the steps. First of all, we have a square canvas. In this case, I have a canvas of 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels. And it's important to have your color set to black. Now to make sure that you have pure black selected, you can go to the color wheel and then double tap here at the bottom and you'll have pure black. And now we are just going to draw our stamp. Let's go and grab a brush like for instance, the monoline brush. And let's say you want a little flower stamp. Drag in the color to fill it, but this could be any type of shape. As long as it's black, it could also be your name or your signature. And once you have created the shape, create a new layer on top by tapping the plus and fill this with pure white. So go to the color circle, double tap here to select pure white and drag it onto the canvas and then drag it underneath your stamp. Now we need to merge these two layers. Just tap the top one until to merge down. Now we are going to copy our stamp. To do that, you can drag down with three fingers on your screen and then select copy. And now it's time to create our brush. Let's go to the brush menu and make a special folder for the brushes that we'll be creating. You need to drag down a little until you see the plus. And then you can name your brush pack or your brush set. Let's just call it five brushes. And then tap the plus here to create a new brush. Now you'll see the brush studio. This is where all the magic happens. Let's go to shape, then tap edit shape or just edit, then tap import, and then tap paste. And now you'll see our little dab that we have created, our little stamp, but we first want to invert it. Now to do that, you can tap with two fingers on the screen. And now we have a white little flower on a black background. And then tap done. Now here on the right, you can make your stroke and you can see that it's, it's like a blurry stamp. We don't want that. So let's go to stroke path and turn up the spacing. Now there's a lot of space between our different stamps. The other thing we want to change is the opacity. It's now set to pressure. So the harder you press, the more opaque your stamp becomes. To change this, you need to go to Apple Pencil and turn down opacity over here. Now every stamp will look the same. It'll have the same opacity. Then once you have your stamp, you can go to about this brush, give it a name, add your own photo, your own name, your signature, and then you can tap done and you have a stamp brush. Now, if we make a new layer on top of this, turn off our stamp and grab a color. You can see that we have created a little stamp brush. If you want your stamp to be bigger, all you have to do is go to properties. And over here, you can change the maximum size and the minimum size. If you turn it up and the minimum size as well, you will adjust what happens with this slider. So the maximum will be bigger. And right now the minimum is bigger as well. And then you can make these bigger flowers. Now let's move on to our next brush. The next brush will be a color changing brush. But first we are going to grab a Procreate standard brush, which we are going to adjust. Let's go to the sketching brushes and grab the soft pastel. Now make sure to duplicate it first. So drag to the left and then tap duplicate, then tap and hold it and scroll up to your little brush folder and drag it in there. Then tap it to open the brush studio again. And to change this into a color changing brush, we need to go to color dynamics. And here you see these different options. You see stamp color jitter. If you turn up the jitter there, then the color for each stamp will, will change. And a stamp is 
actually this shape. So every circle, and that's a lot of circles in there. So when you turn up the stamp color jitter, you get a lot of different colors in one stroke. Now, if you turn up the stroke color jitter, each stroke will be different. So every time you lift your pencil and make a new stroke, a new color will appear. But what we are going to use is the color pressure. And when you turn that up or down, the color will change depending on the amount of pressure that you use on your pen. But you do need a pressure sensitive pen, of course, like the Apple Pencil. This won't work if you are using your finger. So let's go to U and turn it all the way to the left to minus 100%. So let's go to Apple Pencil and turn down the flow and set it to 0%. And of course, you can go to about this brush, give it a name, like color changing, and then tap done. And we have a color changing brush. Let's grab a color like this. And now when we make our brush a little bit bigger, you can see that if we press lightly, we get this bluish green, but if we press harder, it'll become pink. And that's how you can create multiple colors with just one stroke and get this nice colorful effect. If you don't just want to learn how to make brushes, but if you want to learn how to paint with them as well, then you might want to check out my Patreon page. There will go more in depth. You'll find a whole range of Procreate tutorials ranging from beginner level to more advanced levels. Here are just a few examples of results from my friends at Patreon. Let's move on to the next brush. For the next brush, we are going to create an outline brush. First, let's clear this layer. Now let's go and tap the plus to create a new brush in our folder. Here under stroke path, we are going to turn down the spacing. Then let's move on to stabilization. Let's set it to 25%. And that'll, that'll stabilize your strokes a little bit, making them a little bit smoother. Then let's move on to taper. This will let you create a thinner ends for your brush strokes. Let's move this little circle to the left and then turn the size to 50%. Now you can see that the end is just a little bit thinner than it was before. Now when you go to shape, you see a nice circle. We are going to keep it like that. And we are going to go to Apple Pencil and we are going to turn down the opacity again. We want nice opaque strokes. Then you can tap done. And we have a nice untitled brush and we are going to duplicate this brush. Drag to the left, tap duplicate. And to create our outline brush, we are going to combine these two brushes. So while we have this one selected, we are going to select the other one as well by dragging to the right and then tapping combine here at the top. Then tap this new combined brush. And here you'll see the two different brush, the two different brushes that we have created. They are combined over here. Now let's tap this brush here and then change the combine mode. You're going to tap normal and we are going to switch it to difference. That means that what shows up as a brush stroke is the difference between these two brushes. But now these brushes are still exactly the same. So the difference is none. There's no difference, so there's no brush stroke. And to change that, we need to make this brush a little bit smaller. The secondary brush will go to properties and we are going to turn down the maximum size. Let's set it to 60%. And now you can see that our brush stroke has appeared. Let's call this an outline brush. Then tap done. Let's grab black. And now when you start drawing, you can create nice outline text, for example. Let's move on to the next brush. Let's create a brush with a pattern. Let's clear this layer again. Now for the base of our brush, we are going to go to the calligraphy brushes and use the script brush. First, make sure to duplicate it again. Then drag it to your folder. And we are going to combine this brush with a pattern brush. 
Now I have a bunch of brushes in my pattern brush pack. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to play around with these patterns as well. Now let's, let's go and grab, which one shall we use? Let's go for the steps, for example. Let's duplicate it first, then drag it to our folder. And now you're going to combine these two brushes. To do that, you first need to grab the primary brush. And we want this brush to be like a writing brush for calligraphy and the steps, the pattern, that will be the secondary brush. So you need to select that after the first one. Now tap combine and then tap the brush, then tap the brush over here and then change the combine mode to subtract. Now what this does is this brush, this pattern will get subtracted from this brush. Now to change the size of the pattern in the brush, you can go to properties. While well, you have this one selected, the pattern brush, go to properties. And now you can turn down the maximum size. Now you can see that the pattern becomes smaller. And go to about this brush. Let's call it pattern brighter. And then tap done. And now when you start writing, you'll get this nice pattern text. Now let's move on to the fifth and final brush. The final brush we will be creating is a hairbrush. Now the first step is to clear this layer and we are going to grab a brush. Let's go to the charcoal brushes and use the vine charcoal brush. Make sure that you set it to pure black. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger, 20%. And now we are going to create random dots all over our canvas. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller, actually 10%. We are going to make various sizes. A little one over here. Some small dots on the sides. And all of these dots, they will become a hairs in our brush. So the more dots you create, the more hairs will be in a single brush stroke. And just fill this square with these random dots. And some can be a little bit more transparent. And some should be smaller and some a little bit bigger. Something like this should be fine. Now, again, we need to make a new layer on top by tapping the plus and fill that with white. So double tap here, drag it onto the screen, then drag it underneath your dots and then merge these two layers by tapping merge down. And now we need to copy this layer. So drag down with three fingers, select copy. Then let's create our brush. Let's go back to our folder, tap the plus for a new brush, and then go to shape. Over here, tap edit, then tap import, and then tap paste. Now we need to invert this again. So tap with two fingers on the screen to invert your brush shape, and then tap done. Now let's move to stroke path and we are going to turn down the spacing. So there won't be any gaps between each shape, each dab of our brush. Then let's turn up the stabilization a little bit. Let's turn it up to 25% just like we did before. Then we'll go to taper. Let's again, move this one to the left and turn up the size. Let's go for 63%. Then we'll move on to rendering and we will set this to uniformed glaze. Then next we'll go to wet mix. We'll turn down the charge and we'll turn up the attack and let's set the pull to 50%. Now the charge is the amount of paint in your brush. 
When you turn up attack, uh, the more pressure you use with your pen, the more paint will flow. And pull is a setting that, that actually pulls paint around. So the higher the pull, the more the paint gets dragged around. I can't explain it any easier than that, but of course you can play around with these settings. It's often a matter of trial and error and experimenting a lot to get brushes to behave the way you want them to. Now let's go to about this brush and call it a hairbrush. Let's just call it hair. Then tap done. Then let's turn off this layer and make a new one to play around with our brush. Let's just grab a brown. And you can see that we have created a hairbrush and I would suggest layering different colors on top of each other to get that feel of hair. So darker and lighter strokes. And what's great about this brush is that it's also great for smudging, for blending. Let's say we want to add a little highlight to this hair. Then we can go and grab a soft brush, like the medium brush. Let's grab a light color and add some light here, just a line. Then when we use the smudge tool and set it to our new hairbrush, we can actually go over this area and get a nice smooth highlight. Or you can go over the sides and the ends to get a nice soft look. So this brush, this hairbrush is great to paint hair, but also to smudge it and make it look softer. You can play around with the size for thinner hairs. So it's a great all round hairbrush that you have just created all by yourself. I hope you have enjoyed creating brushes together. Please let me know if you did. If you have enjoyed this video, then perhaps I'll come with a follow up and we'll be creating more brushes together. If you have just found out that brush creating is not your thing, then be sure to check out my brush packs. I use my own brushes for all my personal painting projects. So check them out if you haven't already or go to Free From Flow to get a bunch of free brushes. I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time.